Remedy is an interesting game studio. Though their games don't always hit the mark, they have a clear and definitive style that separates them from the crowd. They first reached critical and commercial acclaim when they released Max Payne in 2001 and its sequel in 2003. It's undoubtedly their most well-known franchise, if not thanks to a shitty Mark Wahlberg film. However, Remedy has long since moved on from Max Payne into otherworldly adventures, and they began with a little game called Alan Wake. Alan Wake is one of my favorite games of the last decade, and it's a shame because not a lot of people played it. I mean, what do you expect when you release the same week as Red Dead Redemption? Luckily, the game went on to sell 2 million copies, but that still means a ton of people haven't played it yet. And if you're one of those people, I'm about to change your life. Plus, this game is on Game Pass, so if you're a Game Pass subscriber, you should definitely hit that install button and watch this video while you wait. You'll thank me later. Fair warning, I am going to get into some spoiler territory near the end, but I'll warn you before that happens. Experiencing Alan Wake's story for the first time is part of what makes the game special. So, without further ado, I present to thee, Alan Wake. Right now you're probably wondering, who is Alan Wake anyway? Well, in this game, Alan Wake is a famous author who's suffering from a serious case of writer's block. For years, he's written six books about a detective named Alex Casey, and now that he's finished writing those books, he doesn't know what else to write. So to help put his mind at ease, he and his wife Alice take a vacation to Bright Falls, a small town in the beautiful mountains of Washington State, and they rent a nice little cabin in the middle of Cauldron Lake, blissfully unaware of the horrors that await them. Later that night, Alan gets into an argument with Alice, causing him to storm out. But then the lights in the cabin shut off and he hears Alice scream. He rushes back inside to see that Alice fell into the lake, and like a good husband, he dives in after her. All of a sudden, he wakes up in his crashed car on the edge of a cliff, not remembering how he got there. On his way to find help, he encounters people possessed by a dark shadow, and the only way to kill them is to shine light in their face for a few seconds and then shoot them away. Not only that, but he also finds pages from a manuscript that he wrote, but doesn't remember writing. And to make matters worse, everything written on these pages comes true in the real world. He then makes his way to a nearby gas station, where he uses the phone to call for help. There he discovers that it's been a week since the events at the cabin, and that the cabin's island was destroyed by an earthquake in the 70s. How did this happen? He was there just a week ago! Where is Alice? What are these dark creatures? Well, we will find out more in the next episode. Oh yeah, for some reason, Alan Wake is structured like a TV show, with the game essentially being a six episode season, and you get a recap right before each episode begins. This doesn't mean you have to wait a week for each episode though, because you can play the entire game in one sitting if you like. And thanks to the way a lot of these episodes end, it really makes you want to keep going. Yeah, that's right, Alan Wake was a Netflix series before Netflix series were a thing. You want to watch one episode a day, or just binge the entire season? It's up to you. But from my experience, it's hard not to binge the entire thing. It's also quite fitting because it was announced in 2018 that Alan Wake was going to become a TV show. I haven't heard anything about it since then, but if it's coming to Netflix, you bet I'm gonna binge it. The story of Alan Wake isn't anything complex or spectacular, but I'll be damned if it isn't interesting. It really is written like a Netflix series, toying with our innate human desire of wanting to find out what happens next. What happened to Alice? How did the cabin disappear? Where did the darkness come from? And how much did Verizon pay for the product placement? They clearly paid more than Energizer, that's for sure. Anyway, the story is easily the biggest reason why Alan Wake fans love this game, and that's thanks in part to the characters. I mean, who doesn't love Barry Wheeler? What are the Christmas lights for? Protection, man! Like garlic against vampires? Despite its realistic art style, a lot of these characters feel more animated than grounded, which is admittedly part of the game's charm. You got Cynthia Weaver, a paranoid lady afraid of the dark, the Anderson brothers Odin and Tor, who had a bitchin' rock band in the 70s, and Robert Nightingale, a trigger-happy FBI agent who calls Alan every author under the sun. Get him up, Hemingway! No way to run now, Brown! That's right, James Joyce. I've got you now, Raymond Chandler. Get back in the cell, Stephen King! The character that matters most in this cast, however, is Alan Wake himself. 
I, as a player, feel a great deal of sympathy toward his situation. Sure, as flashbacks have shown, he wasn't the best husband, and he wasn't the greatest friend. But he is in a nightmare scenario that you just want him to get out of. You want him to find his wife, and you want his life to get back to normal. Which is also, I think, a significant reason why fans are clamoring for a sequel, but I'll get more into that in the spoilers section. For now, I want to talk about these weird live-action segments, another part of the game's unusual charm. Remedy would then go on to throw live-action bits in their future games, but the way Alan Wake implements them is just too darn funny. Occasionally, you'll come across TV sets that play a show called Night Springs, a spoof of the Twilight Zone, and they are so corny. Sometimes you just gotta watch the whole thing. The camera work on most of them is so tight-knit, and the actors in them are often dubbed over by even cheesier actors that don't sound anything like they look. And don't even get me started on this talk show segment. Tell me, does this host look anything like he sounds? I want to thank all our guests for the evening. Alan Wake, Sam Lake. Once more, do the face for a Sam. There he is. Also, yes, that is Sam Lake, the director of most Remedy games and the face of Max Payne. More on him in a bit. So the story of Alan Wake is a delight. It's not perfect, it's even a little cliche at times, but you can't help but feel for Alan in the predicament that he's in. And I think that has a lot to do with why people want a sequel to this game. Well, I guess I can't really talk about that without getting into some spoilers, so for now I'm going to talk about the gameplay, which is fun, albeit a bit frustrating at times. You could say Alan Wake is a survival horror game, but I consider it more of a third-person shooter with horror elements. There isn't much in the way of scares, aside from this high-pitched screaming you hear from time to time. OW! Enemies will sometimes come out around corners or break through walls, but this is hardly a jump-scare-filled game. The most common foes you'll find are called the Taken, people who have been possessed by the dark presence that haunts our protagonist. Killing them is simple enough. You shine the flashlight at them for a few seconds until their dark shield is destroyed, leaving them vulnerable to gunfire from your revolver, shotgun, hunting rifle, or flare gun. The revolver is my go-to weapon for the standard enemies, as I save the big guns for the big baddies that take longer to cripple and kill. You'll also get flares and flashbangs for further crowd control, but the flashbangs can feel like a get-out-of-jail-free card since they kill every enemy a few feet around them. Honestly, though, I kind of appreciate that, because enemies crowding you can make for a frustrating fight. If three or more enemies get the jump on you, it's over, because they'll just keep slashing you until your health is depleted. That doesn't happen often, but it's still annoying when it does, especially considering how out of shape Alan is. Damn, dude, go to a gym every once in a while because your sprint game is weak! Come on, man, a tornado is chasing you! Surely that adrenaline has to kick in sometime. Truthfully, I do like the combat system in Alan Wake, if only for its originality. Having to use light to weaken and destroy your enemies is not something I've seen done in a lot of other video games. Well, at least in the way Alan Wake does it. Light versus dark is an extremely common theme in stories, and Remedy found a way to implement it in a combat system that is fun, if a little repetitive. There are breaks between combat that delivers some light exploring and puzzle solving, but you'll still be flashing and shooting the Taken about 70% of the time. Luckily, they've added some slow motion flair to the combat that makes me look like a badass while capturing footage. Thanks for making my job easier, Remedy. Before we move on, I cannot emphasize enough how cool the soundtrack for Alan Wake is, and I'm talking about the licensed music they used. They got the band Poets of the Fall to do some tracks for this game under a different band name called Old Gods of Asgard, which is the band Odin and Tor had in the 70s. They did quite a few tracks for this game, but my favorite one is Children of the Elder God, which plays during an epic battle with the Taken. It was an excellent way to break the tension and added some hilarity in the mix. There's also the song War by Poets of the Fall themselves, which wasn't made for the game, but it played on the in-game radio during another battle scene, and it was awesome. Okay, now it's time for some spoilers, so if you want to avoid them, just skip to this part right here. Now then, let's get into the ending of the game and what it means for the future of Alan Wake. After a night of chugging some moonshine, Alan has a dream that reveals what really happened to Alice. After Alan fails to save her from drowning, he swims back to the surface only to be met by Barbara Jagger, who gave him the key to the cabin at the very beginning. Jagger explains that the only way to bring Alice back is for Alan to write a story where he saves her. And obviously, 
Jagger has more insidious intentions. You see, Barbara Jagger drowned in Cauldron Lake back in 1970, and was saved by her lover Thomas Zane by him writing a story to bring her back. Only thing is, when she came back, she didn't really come back. Her body was used as a vessel for the dark presence that lives in the lake, and now her next target would be Alan, as she would trick him to write a story that would bring Alice back, but really, it would just make her stronger. Fortunately, Alan found a way around this by writing Thomas Zane into the story in order to save him. The quest then led him to Cynthia Weaver, who held onto the object that would stop the Dark Presence, that being a clicker Alan had as a child to turn on the light when he got scared of the dark. After getting this, he jumped into the lake, destroyed Jagger with the clicker, and freed Alice, even though he still wound up trapped under the lake. The ending of this game leaves a bittersweet taste. One happy that the darkness had been repealed and Alice had been saved, another sad that Alan was still trapped under Cauldron Lake, with us wondering what his fate would be. Thankfully, this wouldn't be the last we saw of Alan, as two special DLC episodes were released later on, The Signal and The Rider. It shows Alan being trapped in another one of his stories that he isn't in control of writing. These episodes are more like epilogues rather than continuations of the story, but they do add some important elements worth watching. The big one being that his next manuscript is titled Return. If you buy this game on PC or play it on Game Pass, you'll get these special episodes for free and they're worth playing simply for the well-designed levels, one of which is a Ferris wheel. While these expansions were neat, I and many others wanted a full-blown sequel to Alan Wake. And the closest thing we got to that was Alan Wake's American Nightmare, a standalone expansion where Alan, still trapped in the dark place, finds himself in the episode of Night Springs that he wrote many years ago. The main antagonist of the story is Mr. Scratch, the evil doppelganger sent to replace Alan in the real world while he stayed trapped in the lake. Story-wise, I was not a huge fan of this expansion. It was barely a continuation of the story and more of a spin-off. And when I first played it, I just wanted a sequel to Alan Wake. The best thing we found out about this spin-off is that the old gods of Asgard reunited with Barry as their agent, and they came out with another awesome song. I'm not kidding, look it up, it's so good. The game ended with Mr. Scratch being killed and Alan reuniting with Alice. Or so it seemed. It was made abundantly clear that none of what was happening was real, and I was left disappointed. However, having replayed this game for the sake of capturing footage, I can say it is a big improvement from the original gameplay-wise. The controls feel smoother, the minimap is actually useful, and it has some pretty great enemy variety. If you're just now getting into Alan Wake, this expansion is worth playing if only for the improved gameplay. So after American Nightmare, Remedy spent the next seven years working on two original IPs, Quantum Break and Control, and they just seem to have forgotten about Alan Wake. But here's the thing about Remedy. They didn't forget. In spite of them working on other games, they've made sure Alan Wake never left our sights, even in the most unsubtle ways possible. In a 2015 holiday greeting, director Sam Lake talked about shooting an easter egg for Remedy's upcoming game Quantum Break, and in it was Alan Wake himself. Sure enough, that easter egg showed up at the very beginning of the game, acting as somewhat of a teaser trailer for Return, the manuscript Alan began writing at the end of the game. The references don't stop there, because shortly after, you can find a blackboard that is chock full of writings that try to make out the events of Alan Wake. And after that, there's a fun little one of an employee goofing off playing the game while singing Children of the Elder God in slow motion. Okay, these are fun little easter eggs, sure, but they can't be much more than that, right? This is Remedy just teasing us, isn't it? Yeah, you could argue that these are just fun little nods to Alan Wake and nothing more, but then things get interesting when we turn to Control, Remedy's latest game. This is a game about a secret government organization that handles paranatural phenomena, which basically means they deal with otherworldly beings and events that go far beyond the realm of human understanding. As you play, you find documents scattered all around the building, detailing previous cases and what is- wait, what is this? Bright Falls? 
This isn't the only file, too. You'll find others talking more and more about the incidents in Bright Falls and the disappearance of Alan Wake. There are so many of these, I don't even have time to go through all of them, but the most important hint of all is hidden in the Panopticon, where you can find one of the manuscript pages sealed in containment with a message from Alan Wake himself. Oh, and the old gods of Asgard have a new song in that game. Ladies and gentlemen, this all but confirms that Alan Wake, Control, and Quantum Break are in the same universe. And if you somehow need more proof, the next expansion to Control is all about Alan Wake. Like, I'm not even theorizing, it's really confirmed. And it's the reason why I wanted to make this video at this time. I'm so excited for this expansion because it'll continue the story of Alan Wake and it'll possibly give us a hint at what's to come for the future. At this point, we know that Remedy is planning Alan Wake 2. Even Sam Lake confirmed it in an interview with GameSpot. Will we ever get to play Alan Wake 2? Yes. But with these revelations from Quantum Break and Control, I can't help but think Alan Wake is playing a big part in an even bigger plan. He was just the catalyst for something greater. A Remedy-connected universe, if you will. It won't surprise me if Alan Wake 2 comes out and Control's protagonist Jesse Faden will be an important character. Quantum Break wasn't that big of a success, so I don't know if we'll see characters from that game again. But like, what if we get Max Payne thrown into the mix? Okay, I've never played Max Payne, so I probably shouldn't pretend like I know what I'm talking about right now, but the character Alan Wake created, Alex Casey, shares quite a few similarities to Max Payne, with one of the books being named after The Fall of Max Payne. And in the Quantum Break easter egg, Sam Lake plays an FBI agent named Alex Casey. And in case you didn't know, Max Payne's face in the first game is Sam Lake's. That, and during a flashback, there's a page of one of Alan Wake's books, and the actor who voices Alex Casey is James McCaffrey, the same actor for Max Payne. I'd lain here in the snow while the lurid chain of scenes that had led me here kept playing in my head. Granted, Rockstar owns the license to Max Payne, so this crossover is most likely not gonna happen, but I can dream, can I? Okay, I could go on and on about Alan Wake and the conspiracy theories I have in mind, but the future is looking bright for the series. With Control, it's opened up a new door to possibilities that are just out of this world. And I mean really out of this world. I don't even know where they're going to be going with the stories of these two games. It's crazy, and I just can't be more excited. So if you need another reason to play Alan Wake, there you go right there. It's probably going to be part of a Remedy cinematic connected video game universe, if you will. That and Alan Wake is just an amazing game in its own right, and I really hope that you're going to take the time to play it after watching this video. But if there's one thing Alan Wake has taught me, it's to avoid public restrooms. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video on Alan Wake. Be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you are new to not miss any of my future uploads. I'd also like to thank my Patreon supporters Justice to Free, Stephanie Ferris, Smash JT, and Sean Long. In the meantime, this has been Ferris Wheel Pro, and I will see you all on the next ride.